when we look at other planetary environments, places like Mars, uh, where we might be interested in seeing whether there are habitable conditions, asking the question of whether there could be life, we want to go to environments on Earth that have similarities to those extraterrestrial environments. IFL Science visited the Bowlby Underground Laboratory, a research center of the Science and Technology Facilities Council. The lab is known for its underground dark matter research, but being over one kilometer below England allows you to do a lot more. We spoke to an expert to find out what. So I'm Charles Coquel and I'm Professor of Astrobiology at the University of Edinburgh, and I'm interested in um, life in extreme environments, microbes that live deep underground or in places like volcanic environments and how we might apply this to looking at habitability and possibility of life beyond Earth and also human exploration of space and how we might use that information. The lab is located at the bottom of an ancient sea inside an active polyhalite mine. One of the other areas of research conducted there is studying and understanding what life form can survive and thrive in those conditions, and what that tells us about the search for life elsewhere in the universe. Bulby is interesting because it's deep subsurface, so these are microbes living in low energy conditions, uh, underground in the absence of sunlight, but also it's very salty, so the high concentrations of salt create these briny, salty environments that are similar to or maybe similar to some of the environments that we think could have existed on Mars when there was liquid water. So there's good evidence for sodium chloride on Mars, sulfate salts, and so many of the waters on Mars, particularly underground, might be briny. So we're interested in looking at what microbes live down there, how they make a living down there, and whether they might be preserved in the salt to leave signatures of their presence that you could look for uh, in other environments like Mars. There are many areas in the solar system that have been considered possible places for life to exist. From the clouds of Venus to the underground of Mars, we do not know if any of these worlds can or have life, but the hunt goes on. The places that seem more likely are the ocean moons of Jupiter and Saturn, like Europa or Enceladus. Water is crucial to life on Earth, so maybe that's where to look, although maybe that's not enough. So we found a number of interesting things. One example is that we found that there are environments underground where the salts are so extreme, they have very low water activities, that they seem to be uninhabited. So we often think that where there's water, there's life. And if we, f if we go looking for water in other planetary environments, that would be a good place to find life. But in fact, if it has the wrong ions in it or the wrong sort of chemicals, uh, even liquid water can be uninhabitable to life. So we've found certain brines in Bulby that do not seem to contain life because they're too extreme. And so this is an example of how we can get ideas about how different combinations of ions and different briny environments can limit life in extreme conditions. And, and that's the sort of work that we do in Bulby. How are the microbes influenced by the sort of salts that exist underground and the environments that are created from those salts? You might be wondering how bacteria got so deep underground. Have they been there since before the dinosaurs roamed the earth? Or was it humans that brought them there when we opened the mine? So the salts are 250 million years old, so a quarter of a billion years old. I think controversial as to whether microbes can survive that long. There have been claims that there are microbes in 250 million year old salts, but I don't think that's very well supported. The microbes that are down there today have come in more recently, and some of them may have come from more recent salts in the mine, or they may have come in from the atmosphere and ended up in briny conditions deep underground where they have find suitable conditions to grow, and then they're managed to grow. So it's difficult to know exactly where the microbes that are currently growing in there came from originally. But what's important is they can grow down there, and they uh, managed to take up resonance in a deep, dark underground mine with very high salt concentrations. We often think that searching for alien life is one of the quests to understand our place in the cosmos. But a lot of the work done to study what extraterrestrial beings might be like is done here. 
and can have several practical applications. What's interesting about the work we've been doing in Bulby is it connects looking for life on other planets and developing instrumentation to look for life with an active mine, a currently active mine in Yorkshire. And there's a direct connection between those two things. So by looking for life deep underground in Bulby in Yorkshire, we get ideas about how we might look for life on a place like Mars. But we also get a better idea as to how to understand our environment on Earth and build better instrumentation. And I think that's something that's not really understood, is that there's a, there is this connection between looking after Earth and exploring and settling space. And in some sense, our project, Looking for Life Deep Underground at Bulby, is a microcosm or one particular example of, of that connection. The search for life beyond our planet is not only done in space or on the ground. To understand the limits of life itself and what that might mean elsewhere in the cosmos, sometimes you have to go deep below the surface. <laughs>